Thanks, and um, good morning, everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about Fight for Peace, which, or Luta pela Paz in, in Portuguese, which is a, a project, a program that I started 11 years ago um, in Complexo da Maré, a favela in Rio de Janeiro. Um, before I do that, um, and then go on a journey with you all the way to East London, as you said, and also to a new business that we're launching next week, which is about supporting that, um, I'd like to show you something on screen. So if we can just roll VT, thanks. So I thought it worth showing just a few images. It's difficult to take everyone to a favela. It's a long way away. Um, I guess Fight for Peace um, was disruptive since the very beginning. To a certain extent, it was, I guess, an oxymoron. It doesn't really much, much sense the fight for peace. But unfortunately, in many communities around the world, it does. Um, because peace is not a given. It's not something that you are, uh, you are guaranteed when you're born. Mare is a community that has uh, 17 uh, different favelas. Um, three drug factions control those favelas. There are openly armed young people on the streets, and the community is unfortunately constantly in a state of, of armed conflict. We shut the project two weeks ago because of running gun battles in the street, and grenades were being thrown at each other and so on. Um, and that happens about five times a year. Um, I think that Fight for Peace is about understanding the realities of why young people get involved um, in crime and violence. And it's because of a situation that's much bigger than them. I boxed when I was younger. It was something that was extremely um, important for me as I grew up. Um, and I knew that it was a way to engage and to talk with young people who were not going to school, who were not getting involved in social projects, who decided that those things were not interesting for them for many reasons, whether it were problems at home um, or situations of drug dependency or the excitement of gangs. And I knew that boxing would be a way that I could walk into a favela and I could start talking to kids with a language that I had. My Portuguese was pretty awful in those days. Um, it's a lot better now, thankfully. Um, but it was a way that I could say, I've got something, I've got a language that I speak. Maybe if I teach it to you, there's a way that we can start engaging. And the reason I did that was because I was working for an organization at the time that had about 30,000 young people on their books um, across the state in education programs, in traditional programs, but the kids that were getting really involved in violence, the kids that were getting most involved in gun violence were not interested and were not going. And I knew that even though they were the minority, if we didn't access them, we would have a huge problem in working to bring peace to those communities and to get kids out of, out of um, gangs and violence. <laughs> I didn't also believe in a traditional charity model. I mean, we often see pictures of <coughs> children um, looking in a poorly state to make us feel like we need to give money in order to help. And for me, a lot of these kids that I met um, when I was writing a book called Children of the Drug Trade, where I was hanging out with traffickers for a couple of years in the favelas, were very inspirational characters, which, again, is a bit disruptive. That's a bit of a strange thing to say, a drug trafficker being an inspirational character. But they were people that were taking life, um, taking the opportunities they'd been given, and not sitting down and taking it, and they were looking for ways to make the best that they could. And unfortunately, the only opportunity they had in many situations was that. And I was meeting these young, these young heroes in many situations, and I wanted to show them a, a different path and a, and a different way. And Fight for Peace was about doing that. But it wasn't about 
looking at, upon them as, as victims. And it wasn't about looking upon them as kind of charity cases. It was about looking upon them as inspiration and looking upon them as inspirational characters that through boxing and martial arts could potentially become very successful. But it's not just about boxing and martial arts. We, we work on what we call the five pillars. You saw them up there. It's boxing and martial arts that is about success. It is about becoming a champion. But it's also about inclusion. And a lot of sports projects that are social sports programs say that you know, if you're going to be on a social program, let's not worry about winning. I, I don't agree with that. We've got a Brazilian national champion, but we've also got uh, over 5,000 young people that have come through the project since the beginning in Brazil um, who've never really competed. They've just been there to, be, to, to, to keep fit and be part of a boxing team. Um, number two is education. It's about taking young people that have dropped out of the educational system and putting them back through formal education. Um, number three is about prepare, pre preparing young people for the work market and, and getting them ready to get back into jobs or to get into jobs if they've never been there. Number three is about youth leadership. And that's genuinely about taking young people um, into a situation where, is that 91 seconds? No, no. Okay. I was like, wow, that was quick. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> Quickest fight of my life, I'd say. Um, so <laughs> so um, number three is about youth leadership. Um, and about making sure that the kids are actually running the program themselves. So 30% of our staff in Brazil are now young people that are full-time staff members, and we're bringing young people in the UK um, through that process as well. The organisation started very small. It was me and 10 kids. It's now grown um, to have about 2,000 young people um, in, in two academies in two cities, and we think we've hit on something that we can take elsewhere around the world. And we're starting to work with small organisations in eight different countries now. But we're not teaching them to do exactly what we do. We think that our replication is going to be about principles and about values. And what we're, we spent the last year thinking about is what are the values that we work with, what are the principles that we use to do those five pillars, um, in, and how can they be adapted to different communities and different countries around the world. Um, so we'll be working with organizations in Los Angeles. We'll be working with organizations in Uganda. We'll be working with organizations um, uh, in South Africa and in Colombia um, over the next year who already use boxing and martial arts but don't have a social side to their program or work with the kind of young people that we work with but would like to know how they, you could use boxing and martial arts. You might ask why boxing and martial arts apart from the fact that it was just something that I did when I was younger. It's about discipline. Um, it's about never ever giving up. It's about the fact that you only take out what you put in. And again, that tries to break away or be disruptive to it to often a traditional charity model because it's all about hard work and it's not about handout. Um, and that seems to resonate very well with the young people who respond extremely well to it, both in the ring and outside of it. So we talk often about life champions as well as, as, as boxing champions, about how the things that you learn in the ring you can take elsewhere. And whether you're a champion in the ring or not, we have now young people going to university um, through the community, through the project in, in the favela. And we have young people that are being successes in all areas of their life, regardless of boxing. This took us through a journey um, and we suddenly realized that what we'd done with the project to a certain extent was create a brand. Um, and we did that because when you're in a gang you have colors, um, you have symbols, you have certain phrases, you have names. That's about identity, it's about belonging. And that symbolism is very important because when you're a kid getting into a, into a street gang, um, it's about feeling strong and it's about having identity. And it's about knowing that you can walk down a street that if you're on your own you might feel um, scared, if you're with your crew, you don't. And Fight for Peace to a certain extent did that because we wanted kids to feel um, strong but in a peaceful way. So we talk about um, peace through strength because actually they could walk down the street knowing that they can look after themselves, they're part of this big recognized group, that this is a group which is all about good but at the same time um, is all about being physically fit and being confident and so on. Um, and that has led us through to Symbolism in terms of the way that the building looks, the colors of the building, the logo is very important. The t-shirt and the uniform, the boxing uniform and the martial arts uniform became very important. And we started noticing that kids were not hanging their t-shirts on the washing lines in the favelas um, that we were working in because they were being stolen. <laughs> Which I was really happy about, actually, because I thought, well, <laughs> Then I found that someone was faking a Fight for Peace t-shirt in a local market in the favela. <laughs> and I was like, I bet UNICEF doesn't get that. So, <laughs> so I thought, well, we've got something here, and maybe this is something that we can keep for ourselves because we know that a lot of the big sports organizations, or sorry, the sports brands often team up with sports charities, but maybe we could create, we could do the inverse. Rather than being a company that sets up a foundation or a charity, maybe we could be a charity that sets up a company. 
Um, I had some conversations with some big sports brands. They were interested in running lines of Fight for Peace and other names. Um, we thought, hang on a sec, let's go and get the money and do it ourselves. So we raised private equity um, for a company which is launching next week. And the idea is it's a genuine 50-50 split. 50% of the profits will go to Fight for Peace and 50% will go back to pay the people that have taken a risk with us to put money in. But it's a real brand, I believe. It's not just a brand that thinks up a strap line with a bunch of advertisers. Our strap line is real strength. That comes from the journey that we've been through, the journey that the young people have been through. It's not just do it. It's not um, impossible is nothing, which are great strap lines, but let's be honest, they were thought up in an advertising suite. We came up with real strength because we witnessed it. We saw it, and we didn't create Fight for Peace to sell T-shirts. That's almost like a byproduct. That's happened next along the line. It was also about creating a company that was about performance, about being extremely um, professional in everything that it did, and running as a, a business should. So we teamed up with Central St. Martins, and we've produced what we think is an amazing collection of sports, fightwear, apparel, um, and also uh, lifestyle clothing. And we're going to finish with another film. And I think this is interesting. I guess this is the journey. We go from one film, which is a more traditional concept of a charity. What we're going to look at next is actually exactly the same thing. But as I'm sure you'll see, it's been presented in a very, very different way. And that goes back to this notion of no victims. It goes back to the notion of inspiration. The character in the, in the film we're about to see is Roberto, who joined Fight for Peace when he was 13, having lost his dad from gun violence. Could have gone in any direction. Today, he's the national, Brazilian national champion. He boxes all over the world for his country. Uh, he's had over 100 fights. He's going to be here next week competing in London and being with us for the launch of the brand. He's a young man that comes back when he's back from the national team to coach the kids in the project. He's on the youth council. He will be at university to do sports education very soon. He is the embodiment of what Fight for Peace. And Luta, which is the name of the brand, is all about. Luta means never quit, never give up, uh, always overcome adversity. And if you have to fight, and that's where it comes from, Luta Pelapaz, Fight for Peace and Fight. And Luta, and the reason we picked the name for the brand was fairly self-evident, but also because from a purely commercial perspective, it sounds the same in any language around the world. So you can be Japanese and say Luta, or you can be Russian and say Luta, so that kind of works for us. <laughs> this film, we wrote with him. We didn't go to an advertising agency. We made it pretty much for free. And the actor Idris Elba got involved with us when he heard about the story, because he's actually from Canning Town, even though he's a big star in Hollywood now, and did the voiceover with us. And I think it tells the direction that we want to go. Ultimately, where we want Fight for Peace to end up is Luta. And I think in the end, what we want is you can't tell the difference between Fight for Peace and Luta. One part of Luta makes amazing clothing that everyone wants to wear because it's performance and it's, it's seriously thought out and it's cool. And the other part happens to run sports academies with education for young people in communities affected by violence around the world. And you can't tell the difference. Imagine a big sports brand that exists already, giving 50% of its distributed profits to build centers around the world for kids. That would be a pretty cool sports brand. And that's where I hope we're going to end up. I'm going to finish with this. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Luta clothing. Born of real strength. <laughs>